So our topic today is listening, as you heard from Lewis. And the idea is to learn to listen through a spiritual lens. I think this is one of our worst practices in our entire society. I'm just being honest. I know so many people have taken communication classes, but few have taken classes on listening. Just listening. Not doing, not solving, just listening. So I want, hi Owen, I'm pointing at you too. <laughs> so I want to begin with two questions. The first one is, how many of us have been frustrated by the fact that someone did not give us their full attention? Okay, now, that wasn't a lot of hands, so I don't think everybody really was honest. But I'm going to ask you the second one. How many of us have been the cause of somebody else's frustration because we didn't listen? Okay. So we all know and recognize it's part of our nature to want to jump in and move things along. It's my greatest frustration. Everybody wants to move things along. Get it solved. Get it solved. What's the answer? Move along. Okay. But that's not listening. I get the most frustrated when I'm speaking to someone. They get a notification on their phone, and they look to see who it's from. As soon as that happens, my frustrations build. I can't remember what I was saying, and the person certainly doesn't because they weren't focused on me to begin with. But the truth is, I've been the cause of that very same frustration in others. I've been waiting for a call or waiting to hear from someone and caught myself. You get the ding, you look. We're guilty of that. But I want us to understand it isn't helping our society be healthier. It's causing more suicides and more depression because people are not heard. They need to be heard. Sometimes when we're disciplining Melody or trying to get her to move something along quickly, she will say, can you just listen to me? And really, it's such a reminder. Didn't we hear that last night? <laughs> 11.30. Can you just listen? No. No, actually, I can't. Go do what you're supposed to do. But the truth of the matter is we all have that frustration inside of us that we're not being heard. But we can't be present to others unless we eliminate distractions. Being fully present to one another is all we need to be. We don't even have to solve the problems they bring to us. We just need to be present. And our ability to demonstrate compassion is important. In Luke 8, 18, verse 18, Jesus said, be careful, consider carefully how you listen. Not consider carefully listening, consider how you listen. So I want you to think about right now, how do you listen? Are you someone who focuses on all the words you're hearing and what's going on behind them? Or are you somebody who is focused on what you want to hear? and what you need to do about it. If we're going to demonstrate compassion for other people, we have to connect with them. We don't need to know them, but we need to connect with them by simply listening, just listening to their message. What is it they're trying to say? Interestingly, I looked up the metaphysical meaning of hearing, and it's the ability to look deeper than words and catch the inner meaning. And listening isn't a passive skill. It's not about just being quiet and letting someone speak. It requires full attention, which is why I often say when people call me and they say, do you have a minute? I say, no. 
because I know I won't be giving them my full attention and I'll ask when I can get back to them. Miriam, welcome back. I just saw you. It's nice to have you back. You too, Robert, but she's the one, you know. <laughs> so part of learning about this, when I looked up this in the Bible, so there are places in the Bible where the ear is referred to as the listening mind, not a physical part of us. It's the listening mind. And author Rick Rubin writes that the ear is simply present to the world. It's unlike the eyes and the mouth, which can actually close. He said the ear takes in everything that surrounds us. And in the same way the ear functions, we need to be fully present to other people and receive information, all of it, that's coming in, and eliminate the distractions and pay attention. How, how many of you get on your computer when someone calls you? Raise your hand. Come on. How many of you check your phone when you're, somebody calls? How many of you are dusting your house, cleaning your bathrooms, whatever you're doing, right? I do my best house cleaning on the phone. It's terrible. <laughs> but it's probably the time I'm better, most listening and the better job I do cleaning because I don't really want to just stand there and clean, so I need something else to do. But I'm a good listener, so I do pay attention. Rick Rubin share, also shared that um, when a listener is fully present, the speaker often will communicate differently because he said we are not in the habit of being fully heard. Isn't that crazy? He said when someone's actually fully <laughs> paying attention to us, we're actually uncomfortable because it's not a common practice in our society. If we're fully present to others and we listen well, then we can hear the emotions behind what they're saying and be better supporters of those emotions. He also mentioned that it's about listening, listening intentionally so we hear the whole story and don't just respond to part of the story because we all know we're, as listeners we're somewhat impatient. Yes? Right. So we want to hear just the snippet. How many times do we say, can you give me the short version? <laughs> can I have the cliff note version? Remember cliff notes? Yeah, thank God for cliff notes. But that's how we actually learn to listen. Everything needs to be short, concise, and sweet. Don't want to hear it all. But we need to understand by not hearing it all, we're only going to respond, if at all, to part of what was said. When you listen to the whole thing, then you are not paying attention just to parts. And we might have a relationship with somebody, in which case we're going to be even more biased. So when you hear from someone that you know, and they're trying to tell you something, we tend to be a bit biased in our listening. We know their history, let's say in a relationship, so they're talking to us about the relationship, and we're saying, here we go again, right? Be honest. That's what happens to us. We hear what we want to hear, but the truth is they contact us because we are the listeners. So we want to hear the whole story. How did it change this time? How has it improved? Maybe they've taken a new action and instead of glossing over it, we could compliment them. Wow, it sounds like you took action this time. Kudos to you. What made that happen? But be full listeners without our biases. It is not compassionate listening it's obligatory listening when you're just going through the motion. And we need compassionate listeners. And we all know, don't we, 
when someone's feeling obligated to listen? Can you tell by how they're looking at you? I can too. You know, they're just going through the motions, uh huh, uh huh, right? And just glossing over whatever is going on. In situations where we're listening to someone and we don't have a relationship with them, we can embrace that as an experience and an opportunity for us to get to know them. Sometimes I think it's better to listen to people we don't know because we'll pay attention at least the first and second time. Regardless of whether we have a relationship with someone or don't, we have to get in this habit of not forming opinions, not forming responses, not forming judgment, just being a light. Just think of yourself as being a light and doing nothing but shining your light without anything else. The best listeners understand that giving time to others is a gift to them, but also to us. It's a gift to us. Be there's no need for right or wrong answers. It's just different perspectives. But no one is going to share with us unless we do a good job of creating a safe space for them to be vulnerable. If people come to us and they speak to us and they feel the need to be on guard, then we are not creating a safe space for them. Trust plays such an important role in allowing people to open their hearts to us. If they don't trust the environment or us or know that we'll hold it in confidentiality, then they aren't going to speak openly, in which case we're only getting part of the story. And that's the danger here. We've all had at least one experience, to, haven't we, where we regretted being vulnerable. We're sorry we ever shared an open part of ourselves with other people because they either used it against us or spoke to us differently after that. Trust is a really critical part of listening. And we need to be those people. We have principles that allow us to grow to be those people. It all comes down to us having a spiritual lens. And that means we're connecting heart to heart, not head to head. Think of it like this. A spiritual lens is a clear path in which divine beings see divine beings. But without the spiritual lens, it's a cloudy picture. It's like a dirty window. So we're never going to connect with people truly at that point. Sir John Templeton is one of my favorite resources for all things when it comes to purposeful living because he was such a huge unity proponent. He makes this great point of reminding us that we get so caught up in the planning of our responses to people that we look, overlook the opportunity to actually hear and connect with people. But what I want us to think about is that our need to start formulating answers is driven by our tendency to get caught up in trigger words. Somebody says, I'm having a problem. Problem, I'm a solver, right? But we never get to what the real problem was because we were too busy analyzing. So we need to stop formulating our responses and think about the fact that we're only hearing part. I love the reminder that Sir John gave in one of his books. He, and I had heard it when I was a kid, by the way. I'm sure it was from my mother. God gave you two ears and one mouth so you could hear more and talk less. <laughs> I love that saying. And when I saw it in his book, I kind of laughed, um, especially since it was the same day I read it, was the same day the heart angel, uh, the stained glass heart angel with my mom's name flew off the window. So I kind of felt like she heard me read it, and then she came to remind me. 
ultimately, listening through a spiritual lens allows us to draw upon our inner qualities that go far beyond our humanness. But the more we listen, the more we actually improve our own spiritual journey, believe it or not. Brene Brown wrote this profound message I wanted to share. We need to dispel the myth that empathy is walking in someone else's shoes. I need to learn how to listen to the story you tell about what it's like in your shoes and believe you even when it doesn't match my experience. This is where empathy actually plays a role in our lives. It's our ability to be present to others in their pain, allowing them to fully process that pain. We don't have to be able to relate. We don't have to have a story to tell. If we do, it's great, but we don't need to. We just need to allow people to share. We don't need the Me Too syndrome. Before you know it, we're both in therapy. <laughs> And in the process of listening with empathy, we then help somebody else open the door to their own resolution of problems. We help them see possibilities by empowering them, by believing in them, by shining a bigger light on them, by reminding them they've got this. Not we've got this. We don't need to do that. And by the way, you'll be less tired if you stop doing it because it's an exhausting practice. At the end of the day, we know who the people are that are going to listen to us fully and who won't. So we need to choose wisely and stop wasting our words on the people we know don't hear us so that we're not frustrated and we're not trying to fix them. It's not helpful to us at all. And as we continue to grow spiritually, let's think about developing our listening skills to allow people to release all fear. Maybe some of the things that are going on in our society right now would not be happening if people weren't fear-based. And until they talk about it, it just builds and builds and builds, which I'm certain was part of whatever caused that shooter to do what he did last night. And it cost him his life. Tragic for everyone. Let's review today's lessons. So listening through our spiritual lens requires us to do the following. First, be fully present to others and eliminate all distractions. Second, to identify the emotions that are being conveyed behind the words. Ask questions, demonstrate that compassion. Number three is to build trust and provide safety for others. Trust will allow vulnerability. And number four, just by shining our light, open the door to possibilities, encourage resolution without fear. The affirmation I wrote for today is I listen through my spiritual lens. Let's say that together. I listen through my spiritual lens. I'm going to hold you to that. I want you to practice today with someone just being present and get in that habit every day. Our quote is perfect for today. It's from Josephine Shepherd, and it says, listening is a spiritual act that is best served when practiced intentionally. Let's take that in. And so we say thank you, God, for the opportunity to listen with our hearts, to have people who come to us and ask us to hear them to be able to support the empowerment of other people just by how we listen, without our two cents, without our fixes, without our way of doing things, just empower them. And remember that everyone was born of the divine light.
And so it is. Amen.